back to my Ultima build. Uh, as you saw in the last video, I got some paneling done. Um, and I got the underside coated. Uh, right now, it actually is drying. So I've got the I've got my wave track box sitting there on one of the panels, and then a battery, and then some uh, some home flooring right there. So next steps are to what I'm trying to get done in this video is I'm going to get done the ancillaries. Here's the online build manual, and I've got aluminum paneling done, and I've got the pedals done. So I'm going to go to ancillaries, and in ancillaries we've got hoses, battery cable, wiring loom. Uh, radiator, coolant pipes, luggage boxes, intercooler hoses. So I've got pretty much, and then the Raptor controller, that's the uh, the steering wheel buttons uh, that control certain things like lights and high beams, horn, blinkers, stuff like that. Uh, I did not get the, fa the passenger footrest, so I won't be doing that. But I've got everything in boxes inside. I'm going to open them up. I've got my coolant pipes right there. I'm going to wrap them in some header tape uh, so that the heat doesn't sort of penetrate into the cabin. They run right along here. As you can see, I coated this panel in second skin audio spectrum. Uh, I think it helps. Uh, I mean, it has to help a little bit. I think I'm going to put some of the second skin uh, damplifier, not damplifier, the uh, Megazorb right here which is the same thing i use for the rear bulkhead to insulate the heat there so i'll probably put some in here to insulate the heat from the coolant pipes but um the coolant the radiator coolant pipes go here some of the harness goes down through here and then the lt5 intercooler hoses go down there so i actually just got a shipment of parts from ultima when i first got my kit the radiator was not in there along with some of the other parts um some of the carbon fiber pieces the wing end plates uh, the fuel tanks, um, I'm trying to think of what else. They sent me a whole list though. They have a pretty good documentation of, of what's here and what's not. So I'm actually waiting on the, I believe it's the hubs. So I won't be able to do the suspension until then, or at least I don't want to. I don't want to bolt up the A-arms and then have nothing for them to attach to. So um, I'm waiting on those. Those are probably gonna be out for delivery tomorrow. But as of right now, I'm going to see if I can find the accelerator pedal uh, bracket. So this is a throttle by wire car. So I've got, this is the GM throttle pedal thing. Plugs into there, sends the signal to the ECU. And then I also need to get the same thing for the Tilton throttle pedal. There's a little thing that attaches to the side of this that allows it to work with a throttle by wire. And then there's a bracket that attaches to the chassis right here and then it pulls down on this on this right here anyways i'm gonna get to it i'll do some time lapse footage let me know what you guys think So I dove right in, did my rear brake lines, and these run the left side of the chassis. So in the manual, 
it talks about the clutch line always runs down the driver's side. So this being a left-hand drive car, it'll run down the driver's side right here. Battery cable always runs down the passenger side. Brake lines always run down the left-hand side. And I jumped into the wiring harness as well. This is one thing that I thought was gonna be a little bit tedious, but it really wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I had read from some other owners that their wiring harnesses were unlabeled. So I was pretty nervous. That was one of my concerns, but this one, so you can see that says right hand radiator fan. These are obviously for the headlights right here. Um, and everything's cut perfectly to length and bent with the wiring harness. So you can see it comes down right there and these are just zip tied. This is all going to be cleaned up really nice uh, with P clips that are riveted to the chassis right here. So I'm just working on that right now. You can see my battery cable, got that fitted. And I've got the radiator in that box. And I'm just going down the line of, of everything that needs to get done one step at a time. But I'm gonna jump back on it right now. Just for comparison's sake, this is the stock Ultima wiring harness. This is the extent of it. It goes along this dash bar right here. It goes down right here for the battery, the wipers, um, the washer bottle. We've got the radiators down here. We've got, this goes down through the back. We've got a brake light sensor right here. We've got tail lights. Uh, reverse lights, oil pressure, uh, AC stuff over here. This is for the AC compressor and other things. Let's see, AC fan, switch, alternator motor. So pretty simple, you know, and then this is, let's see, we've got uh, mirror switch, H light switch. Let me see what else. Ignition switch. So this is all kinds of stuff that will live in the dash. Um, you know, pretty simple. Not not all that crazy. Well, here is the LT5 harness. That is just the engine. So. There's all kinds of relays and fuses. Here are all the things that plug into the side of the ECU. Then there's a separate fuel control module. So, lots of wires. Okay, now that I've got some of the wiring harness attached to the chassis and the rear brake lines run, I'm gonna start installing the radiator. Here's the stock radiator right here. And then here is the intercooler for the LT5. You can see here's some, the lines that are gonna come out the side of this aluminum bracket. And then I gotta take that cardboard off and then install fans where you can see these studs coming out. But first steps were to cut these aluminum panels to fit, rivet them, and then put these studs with spacers right there and right here on both sides and then cut holes obviously for the coolant tubes and then the main radiator tube actually flows out from the top of the radiator and then back through there <music>
So the radiator's installed, got the fans in, got them zip tied, wires are nice and clean, they're hooked up to the wiring harness, got those aluminum uh, quick connects on there, and then I just kind of mocked up the uh, coolant tube that goes all the way down the chassis and stops right there. First, I'm gonna wrap it with that header tape right there, and then I'm gonna mount it up with the P-clips. You can see I put the second skin Megazorb. I have a bunch left, so I figured why not? It weighs, uh, all that probably weighs half of an ounce. It, when they ship it to you, it feels like you got a box of nothing. I uh, got the brake lines all very, very nice. So let's wrap these coolant tubes up and let's install those and then I can get to the side pods. All right, moving right along. You can see I've got the coolant pipe in here. I've got the one on the other side done. This is a little bracket that's being clamped in place. That is to hold the luggage container, which sits right here. So there's a cut on the luggage container for this coolant pipe. And then there's some heater hoses that come from the AC unit that have to flow down and go through the luggage pod as well as those two bungs that are right there coming out of the intercooler. The intercooler lines run along here. So here is the luggage pod. You can see I've got this part cut out for the heater hoses. Looks like that in the manual. And then there's two circular holes for the intercooler lines to go through. And then it rivets, this panel rivets to the chassis through here and here. And then this part right here rivets to this and then there's a nice panel that goes underneath the, and bolts to the chassis actually so do a little time lapse of this install <laughs> all right i've got the side pod skin pinned in place you can see those are those notches and holes that I was talking about for the heater lines and intercooler lines to go through. And you can see down through there, all the rivet holes for this panel up here that is skin pinned into place. You can see it goes from the luggage pod to the actual chassis. This thing is really strong. Not like I mean to probably put anything into this thing ever maybe like a uh, like a roadside kit or something like that but this car is not a road trip car by any means so I need to go over here I've got this radiator pipe uh, all placed in a position here I've got insulation on this side and I'm gonna start on this side pod and then that's pretty much it for uh, for the ancillary section all right passenger luggage Pod is on, it's just being held on with some skin pins because there's a lot more that needs to be done later on in the build and I don't want to make this permanent until all that's done. Uh, some of that includes putting holes, bigger holes in here for the ECU. So I'm going to have to figure that out later is how big the holes are going to be and uh, what all is needed there, probably some grommets and everything. The existing holes that I have in there are for the AC lines, which will run right along here. It bolts to this bar, the AC and then the lines go through there. Uh, but everything's drilled out in both the chassis and the side pod. So that'll be a wrap for this video. And then next video, I'm gonna try to get to, let's see, I'm gonna try to get to heater AC, handbrake, gear shift, steering, suspension, and brakes. So there's gonna be a lot to come on the next video. But that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching.